In my year 11 GCSE November mocks, I got a 6 in biology, 1 mark into a 7 in physics and a 3 in chemistry. I failed GCSE chemistry. In January mocks, I got a 9 in biology, a 9 in physics and an 8 and 1 mark off a 9 in chemistry. And in the actual exams, I got a 9 in each of the sciences that I sat including 88% in chemistry, when for nine you needed around 73%. So I got around 14% into a nine in the subject that I failed six months earlier. What I'm gonna be doing today is clearly explaining how I got three nines in my sciences and how you can do the same. If you're new here, please subscribe and please can everyone make sure to leave a like. My name is Henry Brand, I got all nines in my GCSEs and I'm trying to do as many videos as I can to explain that. I respond to all comments and all emails so any questions you have and any emails you have please feel free to ask me and I'll try and answer them and be as personalised as I can. So the point number one, this video is going to be split into multiple points and my first point is you need to know the layout of your papers, okay? So what I mean by this is you have to know what topics you need to learn, what your papers look like and what overall just what content what the structures for your papers okay you can do this by asking your teachers you can look at textbooks you can look at youtube videos or you can look at the specification which i'm going to put up on the screen now the specification is everything you need to learn detailed by the exam boards so this is worth having a look through i'll put the link in the description to the aqa spec but there are a couple others if you want to google it so you do at excel or something like that that's point number one okay it's quite basic but you have to just know what your papers are about and what you're being tested on so point number two is something that I say with every subject, and it's so vital to getting a nine in any subject. You have to know your weaknesses, okay? This is really important. That's how you get better, is you find not what you're good at, but what you're bad at, and improve that. It's really simple, okay? So there are multiple ways of doing this, but you have to find your weaknesses. One way, and the most effective way I did it, is I created on Microsoft Excel a massive spreadsheet with every single topic, I'm going to be doing a video on this as well to show you guys in more detail, but with every single topic that comes up in a science, and I ranked every topic between one and three in terms of confidence and where I was. So I was a one for the topics I knew I'd get the, the answers right if I was asked a question, and a three for the things I had no clue about, okay? And what I'd do is I'd go through and I'd target the weak points that were threes. I'm selling this spreadsheet, so if anyone interested, send me an email. For £15, I can create one for yourself, or you can learn to create one too on the video that I'm going to be doing as well. So that's one way of finding your weaknesses, but you need to know which topics you're bad at. Another way you could do is in the CGP textbooks, the topic list, you could just go through that and rank them and say, or highlight the ones you're really bad at and the ones you need to focus on, okay? Revision has to be focused. If you want to improve and get the nines in science, it must be focused on what you're worst at. That's the priority, okay? So that's point number two. Now, my next point is if you want to get a nine in your sciences and in any subject, you really want to try and stretch yourself and go a little bit above and beyond to develop an interest in the subject. One thing I did in year 11 is I would regularly buy the BBC Science Focus magazine. I found it really interesting and I tried to read it to stimulate my interest in science because it would cover lots of scientific topics and often stuff from GCCs came up. This brings me on to the paid partner of today's video, which is brilliant.org. The reason I love Brilliant is because it is a website that helps you learn maths and science and their bite-sized courses are incredibly interactive and very, very quick as well. So with Brilliant, you can do 10 minutes daily of super interactive courses, for example, on everyday science or scientific thinking courses, one I definitely recommend. And with this five minutes of science a day, you can really build up and develop your interests, which will help you massively in the exams too. So I would definitely get Brilliant. And if you go to brilliant.org forward slash Henry Brown or click the link in the description, you can get 30 days for free to try it out and 20% off a premium annual subscription as well. So I definitely get brilliant and definitely try and stretch yourself and push further, develop an interest in science. So watch documentaries, brilliant, like I said, magazines. If you really want the three nines, liking science and enjoying it will help you. And this will also keep your options open for A-level. And if you actually want to go into a career in science, these type of interests are very, very useful too. So once you have targeted your weaknesses, you know what the papers involves, you targeted your weaknesses and you're stretching yourself as well, you need to make sure you're good at learning the actual content of science. 
the things I would recommend are this, and it's actually relatively simple. Number one, Seneca. Seneca, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, then you won't know, but I absolutely love Seneca. Anyone who sees my videos, I mention it in almost every single video. Seneca for science is very, very good. That's how I managed to jump up massively from my November mocks to January mocks, is I did loads of Seneca, okay? So go through the science topics on Seneca. Don't just do them once. If you do chemistry topic one today, then write down, you should have a planner. I've done videos on that or some sort of timetable or long-term method. But if you do chemistry topic one today, in about two weeks, three weeks, you should be doing it again, okay? Keep repeating it because that is how you actually remember things. So Seneca is a great way to learn the content to a decent level. If you're on the grade nines, you will need to do things to go further as well. So free science lessons and Cognito is another thing I recommend. I preferred free science lessons. Some people prefer Cognito, but I watched every single one of his videos, okay? So that is how you can learn the content, along with the classes as well. But Seneca, free science lessons and Cognito, that can help you understand and learn all of the content in science, okay? I wouldn't recommend something like reading from a textbook. Make your vision interactive and make it you know, not just passive, like reading, okay? So even with free science lessons, if you can attempt some of the questions he puts up, anything like that would be really useful too. So that's what I would recommend in terms of learning the content, which is obviously incredibly important. And as I said, you should target learning the content of the stuff you don't know, okay? Your weaknesses. So once you've learned the content, then the important thing to do is memorize it, okay? It's no use understanding something if in three months' time you've completely forgotten and when the exams come around you have no idea how to actually produce and use that content that you've learned into words, okay? Remember it. So for memorization for science, there's two methods. The first one I'm going to talk about is flashcards, okay? Flashcards, I'm going to do a video on it. They're an incredibly useful form of revision. Question on one side, answer on the other. Write loads and loads of questions for science. For example, on one side of a flashcard, I would write something like, what is the chemical equation for photosynthesis? And on the other side, the answer, or what are the um, factors that speed up the rate of photosynthesis or affect the rate of photosynthesis? And on the other side, the answer, okay? I would spend a lot of time going through my CGP book. This is a combined science I did higher, but they're often split into points and I would go through and flashcard a huge amount of it. Once again, you may be time constrained, okay? So target your weaknesses, that's really important, or things you think you will forget. But I spent so much time learning flashcards and once the exams came closer, doing flashcards for science, okay? One thing that's really important for you guys to know is most of my revision was science, okay? I would say about 40, 30, 40% of all my revision time in year 11 was spent on GCC science. So it does take a lot of time if you wanna get those top, top grades. Flashcards is how I would actually remember the content or is the first step in how I'd remember it. So the second form or the second method I used that everyone must know about of how to actually learn and apply and improve and get up to the grade nine is practice questions and papers. I did loads of these. You have to do loads of these, okay? You can find them on physics and maths tutor. Your teacher may have them. There's loads of questions online of science, okay? And I would just do, after I learned a topic on Seneca, in a week's time, I would do a question paper on that topic, a little sheet of questions. And I would crucially record what score I did. I put it in my spreadsheet that I talked about earlier. And I would focus on what went wrong. I would flashcard what I needed to remember. This process of doing loads and loads of loads of questions is what pushed me up right into the nine. Because the more familiar you get with the mark scheme, the more used to it, and the more you see questions that just come up again and again. Chemistry became almost easy to me because they often test you on the same like five core things. Okay, so they'll ask you like, why is this substance more reactive than this? Or why are group one chemicals reactive? And you can just spin it off your head because you've practiced so much. So practice is incredibly important. You can watch as many videos on these as you would like, but you have to practice questions. Okay, loads. Do practice papers as well. Regularly do practice papers, but lots of little topic questions. And as you get close to the exams, in science for me, almost all my revision was just practice questions. I asked my teacher to print off like a massive bulk pack. And before each exam, I just went through all of them and marked them and you get really used to the mark scheme. So practice questions, okay? Do loads of practice questions, find your weaknesses and improve. Now, one thing as well that people have recommended that I didn't do, but I definitely recommend is watch 
kind of past paper walkthroughs on YouTube. YouTube is a great resource and watching people go through a paper and get full marks and talk to you how they got full marks in science papers will be great revision as well. So make sure you 100% do that. Finally, don't get caught out on the practicals. This will usually be about six marks a paper at least. So practicals can be the difference between a nine and an eight. OK, this is how I'd learn the practicals. I made a list of all the practicals I needed to know and then I watched three science lessons videos on it. I read the textbook on it and I made flashcards on it. And then once I had the flashcard, I would do loads of practice questions on it. OK, practicals, you usually just need to know the steps and the type of questions they'll ask you around that stuff. Don't miss out on the practicals. It's something that I'll be reminding you of lots throughout the year, but there's quite a lot and they make up a lot of marks. So that's quite efficient revision because they almost always come up. OK, so learn the practicals using flashcards or just blurting any other form of revision that works for you, obviously. I hope this video is really helpful. That is how to make GCC science easy. And a lot of this, these principles, you will hopefully see me repeating quite a lot because these are going to come up again and again and again in your exams. OK, this is how you get a nine in your subjects. You find your weaknesses, you practice, you learn the content through memorization, Seneca. OK, so please leave any questions in the comment section or email me. Like I said, I really hope that was helpful. OK, I hope that improves your science grade. Honestly, it will work for you. It worked for me. I was never naturally really good at science at all. Like I said, I failed chemistry and managed to get a nine. One of the most important things you could do for the nine is subscribe to my channel and have the notifications on as well, because I will be doing lots and lots of videos just to help you. I often take video requests as well. So if you have anything you'd like me to specifically cover, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next GCC video.